This is a beautiful example of fruiting bodies beginning to form by the soil organism uh, Myxobacteria that does all sorts of interesting things when it comes together in a group that it wouldn't do as any individual cell. This is social behavior. So this is an example of bacteria acting in a multicellular fashion, if you will. Microorganisms, however, can get remarkably large. They're not just on the scale of microns. And here's a good example of this. This is, to my knowledge, one of the largest microbial cells known to date. It's called Thiomargarita namibiensis, which means the sulfur pearl of Namibia. And it is on the same scale as the eye of a fruit fly. And when you look at it in more detail, the reason it's so big is that it contains this huge vacuole filled inside with nitrate, which is one of the substrates it uses to power its metabolism. And it couples the reduction of nitrate to a more reduced form of nitrogen to the oxidation of sulfide, and in this way, powers energy for growth. But let's leave the metabolism aside and stay focused now just on the form. Here's an example of one of my favorite organisms, Rhodocetomonas palustris. And the reason I'm showing you this is simply to illustrate that it has quite an amazing uh, membrane uh, structure within it, one that is reminiscent even of the Golgi in higher organisms. And indeed, it might have been the progenitor of that at the cell biological level. And how these various structures form, these are what we call the inner cytoplasmic membranes where the photosynthetic machinery is housed in this case, in terms of the detail of what creates their shape, is an open and exciting question that future microbial cell biologists will no doubt solve. But the final example, which is probably my all-time favorite, is of an organism called a magnetotactic bacterium. And here you see, if you just look at it in a light microscope, although this is actually an image of fluorescence where we've put some GFP into the bug, it looks like just a common spiral. If you take a fancier microscope, a transmission electron micrograph, and cut it open and do a thin section, you can see that it has this beautiful chain of magnetic particles inside it. And now what I'm going to show you is, I think, the best advertisement for the beauty of bacterial cell biology that I know. And it's a cryo-electron uh, tomogram of one cell. And this was work done by Arash Kamili, who's now a professor at UC Berkeley, and his collaborator, Zhu Li, in Grant Jensen's lab at Caltech. And together, we made this movie showing the internal structure of these organisms. So what you're going to see now is coming up through the bacteria, different sections. And here you see the magnetosomes coming into view. Those are the membranes that contain the magnetite. If you miss them, now look. OK, here they are in red, those magnetosome membranes. And then there's this yellow filament surrounding them. And what we've come to appreciate is that this filament is a protein that's very similar to actin. And it's necessary for these magnetosomes, these organelle-like, although they don't never separate from the membrane, so they're not true organelles. Here you see they're attached by a neck that's only five nanometers in diameter, which is quite amazing, um, to this inner membrane. They invaginate and form these vesicles within which a beautiful single domain crystal of magnetite can form. And this order, the fact that they're linear in a chain, is enabled by a cytoskeletal filament um, an actin-like protein.